Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 30th of July. Now, as we open uh, trading in Asia on Monday, now the currencies, as you, if you come back to the majors and you miss trading on Friday, you'll see the uh, uh, there's a little bit of an odd event. We had some strong US numbers, but we saw the US dollar ease. And the majors at the moment, Aussie, Kiwi, uh, Euro and Sterling, all still pretty much correlating um, very close, right? That's, that's a good thing. That, that's a sign of good trading conditions. Um, what was a little bit weird was the data, and I'll come into that in a second, but we start the week mid-range. We've got some support and resistance levels on uh, those four pairs. If anything, dollar yen is sort of just grinding, grinding sideways up and down through the cloud. It is a little bit undecided, and that comes back to the whole, you know, what's going on with this trade tariff. It's a, it's a true reflection of the lack of, foresight or understanding of what, where the hell that's going. Dollar CAD, well, oil has sort of seemed to be sort of sticking around $69, $68 a, uh, a barrel, and that's keeping uh, Dollar CAD pretty much on the sideways movements as well. Now, let me just come back, um, first of all, just to sh just sort of explain. Let's have a look at the, uh, the US numbers here from Friday. Now, this is one of those weird events. Now, if, if, a, if a result is forecast or telecast in, into the market, we, uh, you can get some odd events. Now, there was rumors even coming from Trump. He was saying GDP was expected to be around 5.3%. I think someone had probably told him that the, the sales advance was gonna be super strong. Now, that's one component, but if you look at the, um, all these other numbers, they were, a lot of them, even the University of Michigan sentiment final numbers, are all pretty strong. And GDP, the core number there, 4.1%, was pretty much as expected. The revised numbers, for the uh, GDP uh, was up on the on that core number. The other ones were a little bit mixed. So overall, looking at those numbers there, I would have thought, you know, the US dollar rallies. But you take into consideration that Trump had already come out and blown his own trumpet, excuse the pun, he um, really s screwed up the opportunity because the market started to factor in really high numbers and particularly for the core number up towards 4.7 uh, and above. So. When that expectation floods the market over a 12 hour period, what you can actually happen is, even if the numbers are strong, uh, the, the, the damn thing goes down because the market was exact, actually expecting uh, much higher numbers than what the initial forecasts were. And that's what we saw on the, uh, on the majors. So it was a little bit of toing and froing it on the, on the release, you know, especially down around here, around that sort of 25, 30 mark, especially on Euro, I was watching that very closely. And the market traders were like confused. Well, do we buy dollars or sell them? And it wasn't until sort of later in the session that we started to see the um, US dollar just roll over a touch. And that sort of sent the, uh, the majors here back into the middle of the range. Now, this isn't, isn't a bad thing, right? Having him back in the middle of the range gives us a target both sides. Now, what we have to really do is, is come back and connect. Let me just change the screen. Here, is, is see what where the raw nerve is. Now, the US dollar itself, if we come back into looking at last week's sort of trading, right, we're looking at the what's going on the dollar. Uh, over the course of that week, it really didn't go anywhere. Okay, it's sort of topping out around 95 and, and sort of bottoming out around 94. So the US dollar really undecided and that makes trading that little bit harder because we aren't getting a huge amount of direction from say uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the Eurozone or, or even the UK. So we're reliant on the US dollar to give us that direction. If it's just trading sideways with no real upward or downward solid momentum or trend, then it is a little bit trickier. So that's what we're looking at. But the raw nerve in the market, and this is gonna be a major focus, I'd say for the next three to six months, if not year or longer, is dollar China, the offshore yuan. Now, as you can see here at the moment, it's, it's sort of opened up in the, like gap, if you want to call it that, but it's it's banging away here, and the and the market, particularly in Asia, is watching this very closely for movements. Now, the uh, I was just saying in the trade zone on Friday, just be very careful trading uh, some of the other currencies on the back of this. This thing can move up and down 100, 100 200 points, and we we get a two or three point move on some of the majors. Now, the market, as this goes on and on, the market will become more desensitized by the the movements in the one. Okay, unless they are dramatic. And, and you can see, um, like last week, we had that move down through sort of 6.75. It bottomed out around 6.73 and a half. Next thing you know, it's up sort of 10 cents. 
Okay, so just be aware, we are still going to watch it, but the market will become desensitized by the movements as we go on through the course of this week. So the US dollar, pretty undecided, and dollar one, well, I would expect it to, it to weaken further, but we have to just wait and see from here. Now, let's just have a look at the, uh, the core, uh, the upcoming major events. Now, this is obviously where we're following the market. Um, we're really looking at Tuesday. Okay, once again, the markets, um, we've, we've got uh, reasonable, reasonably good trading conditions. Okay, we've got clear correlating markets. Those, uh, all those geopolitical issues are settling down and that's creating, uh, or the, the majors are trading mid-range, so they're not real sure where they're going, but the volatility around those geopolitical events is, is simmered. So I think trading conditions are reasonably good at the moment, even though we don't have direction. And it's really coming into Tuesday where we've got the Eurozone CPI flash estimate, the uh, CAD GDP, and the US consumer confidence to really kick things off. Okay, so that's what we're gonna wait for. And as you can see here on the, uh, the countdown clock, We've got over a day to wait. So don't sort of sit by the screens hoping something's going to happen straight away. Now, for those that are looking for um, a trading opportunity, okay, if you come back and have a look, there are some bits and pieces out today. So if I just scroll down here, um, you'll see as we come into the uh, European session, there's, there's, a, there's some peripheral numbers here that are definitely worth having a look at, right? So we've got the, um, you know, you got some mortgage numbers out of the UK. Now, that you need some really strong variance to get that moving. But one of the, some of the key numbers that I'm looking at are the, um, some of the sentiment numbers here out of the Eurozone, and in particular, the uh, prelim CPI numbers out of Germany. Right? They are uh, an important component of Europe. Obviously, Germany's holding all of Europe together, and that's uh, really what you probably want to be looking at as you come into that European session, see how the majors are trading, and keep an eye on those uh, European numbers. It's all pretty much all we have to, to look at uh, at this early stage. All right, now, one thing not to uh, forget about, and this is obviously more important for the, um, uh, the Asian session, let me just change the screens again. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, the end crosses, we, we have got some good setups coming up here on, um, across the board. And uh, Dolly Ann just trading sideways, okay. Now, it's uh, really not going anywhere in a hurry, but if we do get something out of uh, the woodwork, uh, whether it's positive or negative, you can see potential opportunities both sides of the market. The good thing is we do start, we are starting to have some really nice setups here across the board on the yen crosses, Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, uh, sterling yen, not so much, but we, it's sort of sitting there nicely correlating with the other currencies. And you can see here now also much clearer that impact where oil is trading sideways, CAD yen, the natural oil trade is also just banging away sideways. So I'm expecting something really good out of the end crosses this week. Not necessarily Monday, but as we go through Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to have a, a bunch of opportunities here on the end crosses as potentially as well as the majors. All right. So this is, uh, I think the formation for the week looks really good. The, um, if I just come back to those, um, the releases, if you have a look at the, the actual economic numbers we've got loaded up for this week, okay, there's a huge amount of opportunity here. You come in earlier in the week, we've got some uh, numbers out of Europe, Canada, US, and then uh, New Zealand come Wednesday. And then you've got some manufacturing numbers out of the UK. Uh, obviously, we've got the Fed funds. Okay, the FOMC is going to be hugely important, as well as the Bank of England. So these two major central bank uh, releases, Wednesday, Thursday, are going to be you know, extremely important. Um, and then we have uh, some more data kicking in. Obviously, first week of the month, you have the non-farm payroll. So really big week. We've got some uh, good trading opportunities to, to kick things off, some potential opportunities for a directional trade. We don't necessarily have good trending markets at the moment. We have, you know, they're, they're moving around, but there's no clear dominant trend. And those trends usually come from the uh, central bank. So that's what you're really going to be looking forward to with the, uh, the Fed and the Bank of England, well, uh, these two core events, the two probably two of the biggest uh, central banks, that's what we're really going to be looking for. Carney, obviously, having a speech afterwards is going to be very important for Sterling. All right, so plenty going on. Tune up your charts. It's only Monday. There's no sort of major data. Check out the European uh, start of the European session. We've got some of those numbers. And when you come back looking at the majors, you know, just piece together. You know, what we're looking for is, is good potential entry levels, right? 
We're looking for good trend lines. And now we're, then we're trying to connect the uh, economic numbers with these levels, all right? Now, ideally, we're going to be watching for dollar yen, probably watching uh, the offshore one uh, for direction there. And the rest of them, I think dollar cad is going to keep trading sideways. But we need some data to give these currencies direction. And that's why we're waiting, all right? Otherwise, you're just going to be banging away in mid-range. And that's where you can come unstuck. All right, guys, that's the uh, FX Market Insight for the 30th of July. Um, if you have any questions uh, about anything, jump in the trade zone, ask me a question or any of the other traders. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of your uh, questions. All right, guys, have a good uh, trading day, trading week. Uh, I look forward to uh, getting involved as we go through. Cheerio.